In this video, we will be setting up and configuring the new ICX30 cellular radio. In this scenario, we need to read and write data to pumps out in the field miles away from the control room. We will be using a SCADA to talk to an open VPN server to multiple ICX30 HWC radios attached to the PLCs on the pumps. If you are using a Rockwell processor, we will show you how to integrate our cellular modem with an add-on instruction. Bring this into your Logix processor and give you access to the radio's GPS coordinates, temperature, sending and receiving SMS text messages. When you receive your module, it is set to a default IP address of 192.168.0.250. In order to configure this radio, we need to have access to that web page. Instead of changing the IP address of your PC, we will change the IP address of the cell modem. To do this, we need to launch the ProSoft Discovery Service. This utility can be found on our website. This utility will scan the network looking for any ProSoft product that uses a web page. Once the ICX30 HWC shows up in the ProSoft Discovery Service, right click on the module and choose Assign Temporary IP. This will allow you to change the modem's IP address long enough to get to the web page to change it permanently. Once you assign the temporary IP address, you can close the Discover utility. Open up any web browser, click on the URL or address bar, and type in the address, then type colon 8080. This will open up the configuration page for the ICX30 cell radio. When the page opens, you will be prompted to put in a username and password. The username is admin and the password is password. The first page that opens up is the General Information tab. This will give you general information and status of the modem. The first thing we will do is change the username and password to ensure the security of your network. To do this, click on the Network Interface, then WAN Configuration. Click on the username and give it a specific username, then click on the password and give it a specific password. Now we can add the APN name to the module. If we do not add this, the module will reboot to try and fix the APN issue. The APN is a name or number given to you by your cellular provider. Still in the WAN configuration, enter the APN number you have. If you have a PIN to lock the SIM card, the auto PIN is where you'll enter that information. The rest of these options here are not needed for our configuration, but these options are explained in the user manual. The next option we need to configure is the IP address of the modem. To do this, we will hover over Network Interface and then click on the LAN configuration. I'm going to change the IP address to 10.1.2.120, the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, and the gateway of 10.1.2.1. Your values may differ. Now we can start configuring the modem to fit our application. First we will need an already configured OpenVPN server waiting for client connections. We will configure this modem as a client connecting to an OpenVPN tunnel. Click on Advanced Setup, then click on VPN Tunnel OpenVPN, then choose Client to enable this option. First choose which protocol you would like to use, UDP or TCP. Typically we recommend UDP because of speed. Next we will choose the encryption level, from none to 256 bit encryption. TLS renegotiation time. This is the time in seconds that the modem will wait to renegotiate a new key exchange. This will keep the connection constantly updated and secure. LZO compression. This is the algorithm used by the OpenVPN server to compress the TCP IP data packets to reduce the amount of data going through the air or on the 3G connection. Typically we recommend adaptive. This means it will get the LZO information from the server. Port is the port being used by the OpenVPN tunnel, typically 1194. Server address. This is the IP address for the server linking all the client modems together. The following section determines who we are to a server, what the server is, and how the communication is handled. Custom Config 
This is used only if you have a unique or custom VPN network. These files are typically set up by the person setting up the OpenVPN server. Once you have these files, copy and paste them into the appropriate fields. Certificate authority is issued by the server as a trust that certifies this modem connecting to an OpenVPN server is genuine to that server. It certifies ownership by use of a public key in the form of this certificate authority and the server matches it up with the private key on the server side. Client Certificate Once the server recognizes the Client Certificate Authority file, the client has the authority to knock on the server's door. The client then presents its Client Certificate file to the server. Last but not least, the Client Key. Once the server accepts the Client Certificate file, the client then presents the Client Key to identify itself as a specific individual. The client is now authorized to communicate with any other client attached to the OpenVPN server. With that step done, we have successfully configured the client modem to connect to an OpenVPN server. This gateway provides a way for Ethernet IP compatible devices to get status, send SMS text messages, and read GPS coordinates from the radio straight to your PLC processor. To do all this, we need to import the supplied add-on instruction into our PLC program. First, we need to open up our RSLogix 5000 version 16 or newer, or our Studio 5000 program. Next, we need to create an Ethernet path to get to the ICX30HWC. If you are using a processor that has an Ethernet bridge already installed in the project, you do not need to do the following step. Right-click on the backplane and click New Module. Uncheck the Module Type Category Filter, then check Communications. Highlight the 1756 ENBT and then click Create. When the new module window opens up, give it a name and a proper IP address, then click OK. Right click on the Ethernet icon, choose New Module, Again, uncheck the filter type and check Communications. Scroll down to Ethernet Bridge, click Create. This will be the Ethernet address of the cellular modem. In the Module Configuration window, give it a name. We recommend the name ICX30. If you name it anything else, you will have to change some of the message paths in the add-on instruction. Next, put the IP address of the cellular modem. Then click OK. Now we can import the add-on instruction to our project. Right-click on any available rung and choose Import Rung. Navigate to the ICX30HWC add-on rung. Select the AOI and click Import. The add-on instruction can be found on our product DVD that ships with the module or on our website. When the import dialog box opens, click OK and the import process will begin. Once the import is completed, open the controller tags. Here we can see the new controller tags the AOI brought in. The first tag we'll look at is control. This tag is used to trigger all the commands to the modem such as get status, get GPS information, and trigger messages. The next tag is status. This tag will be populated once the get status trigger has been toggled. Here you can see signal strength, IP address, the analog input status, the temperature, data usage, and many others. Now we will go over SMS text messages. There are two ways to send messages from this modem. One from the controller tag SMS, and the second is done through the web page of the module. When we expand SMS, we see a read and a write. The read array contains an SMS text message the modem received. When the control trigger for the SMS read is toggled, you will see the most current text message, but doing this will overwrite the previous read message.
The SMS write array is the message and the number you would like to send a text message to. You can enter up to five numbers at a time. Also, to trigger this SMS write, you will have to trigger it where you trigger all your commands, under the Control tag. The next thing we'll go over is the GPS tag. Once you trigger the Get GPS tag in the Control tag, you will see the current longitude and latitude and timestamp of the modem. There are many other features that this modem can handle, such as it has the ability to connect to an NTP server and get that information to your PLC. And as far as security goes, the ICX30 HWC can filter traffic by MAC address. And the configuration web page, which is an HTTPS page, can also be password protected. For any more information on this product, please visit us at our website at www.psft.com AIW. And as always, happy training!